Hey, what's cooking everyone? Today's video will not be a cooking show, but we will be doing a anisotropy shader. I will be showing you how to get that nice reflective look going for your metal shaders and I'll be revealing quite a few tricks how to get it actually going. So be sure to check out today's video where I'll be going in depth um, how to create that shader. So be sure to check it out. But before we start our cooking session, I first of all want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Autodesk. Um, which is a, a company developing lots of different applications like 3ds Max, AutoCAD and Maya and I will be working in Maya today using the Arnold Render Engine. So before we jump in I want to give you a quick overview of how I set up the scene, how I model the saucepan which will be actually shading and after that we will be jumping into the shading. So be sure to follow the steps check it out, leave some comments below and have fun watching this video. Alright, it's a straightforward process. I'm just using a plane, I'm circleizing the edges and vertices and then I'm just doing simple extrude and bevel operations to get the basic shape of the saucepan. After that I'm extruding it again, pushing things inside to make this a hollow object and I do way more bevels and extrusions and then we have a roughly finished saucepan. Another very simple process, I'm just using a curve and extruding a cylinder around that curve then I'm mirroring it over and mirroring it again to get the both handles on both sides of the saucepan. To get the anisotropy right you need to have proper UVs so I'm using a top down projection to get a nice circular round UVs for the top and bottom of the saucepan. And I'm also creating two UV sets, one is just for if you want to apply some textures on it and the other one would be for the shader anisotropy. Alright, so now that we have that nice um, saucepan modeled, um, let's just jump into the shading, assign the standard surface shader and let's just get going. I think we will be starting with the bottom here and then we will just be going from there. So let's check it out. Alright, here we are. I have a basic material assigned. It's a neutral gray shader and we do have our two UV sets. So we have um, this one here which is our anisotropic one and we do have our regular one. So right now I'll just sh um, showing you the anisotropic one just to showcase exactly what we want to do here. So to get that nice effect of anisotropy which is this reflecting in different angles, uh, we first need to create a ramp. So I'm just using a AI ramp float. And what I'm doing with that, I'm just for now just converting this quickly to a um, RGB shader. So I just do flow to RGB, um, AR flow to RGBA. And that way I can at least show you guys what I'm exactly doing. So if I hook this up to my shading engine, you can see now this is what we have. What we need to do, we need to switch this from V to um, radial. And then we may need to make sure that we specify our um, UV set down here. So it's called an ISO, I think. And then you can already see that it is now going around and this defines how the reflection is behaving um, once it's being rendered. Right, what I want to do then is I just hook up our base shader again, which is our basic gray. What I want to do now is just create a simple chrome shader. So I'll make sure that um, our color is roughly around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 or something like that. Make sure you have metalness on. And if we reduce our roughness now, we can already see that we have a nice reflective, very clean looking metal. And uh, right now our reflection is isotropic, which means it's reflecting in, this, in the, the same way in every direction. What you want to do is increase anisotropy, which means that your reflection is being stretched in, a, in an axis. You do need to have roughness though for this to work. And you can see now um, that the pan or the saucepan is reflecting in one axis. If I change my rotation, you can see it's rotating. Um, and what we want to do is we want to apply the, um, the map we just created, which is the AI RAM float. What I want to do, I want to plug this into rotation. So I can just middle drag this into rotation and you can already see just by doing that, we get already this, this nice looking effect of um, specular stretching or rotating. Um, depending on the roughness, you get a stronger or less strong effect. Something like that works already quite nice. And you can also adjust the anisotropiness how much you want it to be. For now I want it to stay on one and I probably ju just want to play around with our color just to make it a bit more um, aluminium looking like a bit lighter and then we can reduce the roughness to just get that nice ping back. Something like that. 
what we don't want to do is we don't want to have anisotropy on the sides here. Um, so, so what I want to do, I, based on the UV set we have right now, we can apply a different kind of algorithm um, for the RAM right now, radial, but we can also use um, circular to be, to mask out certain regions. And let me show you what I mean by that. I just uh, duplicate the RAM by shift Ding it, and um, I will also reconnect this one here. So we can just use that flow to drive our look here. You can see now we have the same ramp here, but what, what I said, I want to change this to um, circular. You can now see we have a circular pattern emitting from the center and the same on the inside. So what I want to do, I just want to um, adjust our fall off here from this, um, from these two handles here, just to make sure that we have a nice clean cut from, um, from the center. Something like that here. So now we have a nice clean mask. What I can do, I can just plug this into um, the anisotropy and whatever is white will have anisotropy and whatever is a black will be isotropic. So what I want to do, I want to invert this. So we can just use a complement, AI complement here, plug in the out color. And if we then plug only the red channel or we just drag this onto anisotropy, um, and connect the red channel or any other luminance value to specular anisotropy um, We should get the same effect. Let's see how that looks And now you can see that on the side we don't have the stretching but on the bottom we do and the same on the inside We do get that nice stretching but not on um, the inside of the walls here of the saucepan what I want to do though, I want to change the roughness. So we will be using the same mask essentially just to control the roughness as well. And what I want to do here, I just want to create an AI color correct. I'm using the color correct because I can um, connect a mask input. And the mask input should be the same mask we use for the anisotropy. I'm just dragging this into mask. My out um, red goes into specular roughness. And now um, if I change my value here, this is our base roughness. And then if I multiply it, um, you can see that the bottom is essentially disappearing. Um, what I want to do, I want to not use the complement, the inverted one. I want to use the, the one which is uh, before the invert. So I'm just using this one here instead. And then we get this on the correct side. And all we have to do now is uh, the top one will control our roughness at the bottom which works quite nicely. And then we can control um, the roughness with this multiply here. So we, you do want some kind of roughness. You don't want it to be super clean. You just want to get some kind of um, little bit of breakup here. So I think this works quite well already. So um, um, now let's get going and make this bottom um, saucepan a bit better. All right, so for this next little thing, I want to show you a nice little trick how you can actually get these um, these rivets. It's hard to see maybe, um, but there are these very thin, if you feel with your finger over it, you can feel there's some kind of surface ir like <laughs> irregularities. <laughs> and um, I will be showing you how to do that. So we'll be using two noises and one is plugging into the P section of the other one. And what, it's, what that is doing is telling the, sec the, the second noise from where it should sample the points. And if we plug in a radial ramp which starts from the center of the of the pan and goes outside and we then apply a very random fine noise to it, we'll get this circular motion. And I'm, I'll be using that as a bump map to get these nice fine little patterns. And you don't need to do any fancy um, texturing, so you can do all of this in the shader. So let's check that out, it will be interesting for sure. All right, so now let's create that RAM shader so we can get started with those rivets. So what I want to do here, I'm just duplicating these previous notes. I just want to plug this again into the um, flow to RGBA and I just want to hook that up to the surface shader. So right now we have the circular ramp, but what I want to do, I just want to have it start from the center, which is uh, zero, zero per for this object. And then we have this radial fall off. So this is what I want to use to control this P value from that noise. So if I create a um, cell noise here and I plug that into my surface shader, you can see what it looks like, something like this. We can probably add a few more detail or octaves later, but I just want to show you what happens now. So you can see we have this P slot here, which is essentially what I was talking about. So if I hook this up our RAM into the P slot here, we should already get something very interesting. Probably you need to increase the scale a bit. 
you can already see now just by doing this we get this radial pattern and we obviously need to increase way more um, uh, add more detail and also add more um, scale to this so let's try maybe 50 and you can now already see that we get this cool looking radial motion and this is very similar to what you would see at the bottom of those um, saucepans or um, whatever like some kind of brushed um, or anisotropic surfaces so let's push this a bit more we can try different noises as well we can use different operators like additive or non-additive uh, we can break things up like i'm just testing stuff out until i'm satisfied we can also try wally -E. this works well too i think cell did not work as well because it's super harsh and it's not as good with the bump maps um but they look cool but I think I just want to go with this um, basic additive no, uh, noise. And what I want to do now, I just want to create a simple AI bump. Um, sorry, not the Maya bump, an Arnold bump node. And I just want to hook out a luminance value to the bump map and connect that to our um, normal camera here. And then make sure we view the shader. And now you can already see just by rendering this little section here um, that we get these nice um, stretchy lines all over the place. And this is exactly what I wanted to create. And this is a very nice little trick to actually get this map working without doing much of texture work or radial distortion or radial blur. So this is a quite neat trick to do that. Um, right now, though, it's also um, affected here. It's also on the on the side. So we essentially need to do a very similar thing as we did before. Um, is by just masking the top section off. So what I want to do here, uh, want to look, have a look at um, this map, which is this one, and I just want to use that as a multiplier for the bump maps. Um, and what I mean by that is I can just create an, a multiply here. And right now our bump map is at 10. So I want to do the same value in here. Okay, so I have my value here, which is now uh, 0.01, and then I want to multiply this with um, um, this value here, probably the inverted one. So I want to multiply the top section with zero, essentially. That way we're disabling the bump map on the sides here. So I'm just hooking this up to um, slot number two, and then this um, value here goes into the bump height. That way we don't have any bump on the sides, we only have the bump map here at the bottom. And hopefully this uh, reflects that. Yeah, there's no bump on it. But what I still want to do, just an overall breakup, is add a larger, um, like a large frequency noise on top of that, which just helps selling the object. Because it's a metal, there will be some kind of um, bumps or dents in it. So I'm just creating a noise and another bump map. And what I can do now, I can stack those two bump maps together. So first of all, let's hook up the noise and go the out value to that normal slot. And if I visualize this noise, this is how it looks like uh, right now. I can just make the size a bit larger. Something like that should work. We can add a little bit of distortion. And then um, we, we can see already that our lines here, which are reflecting, are not super straight anymore. And the higher I, I uh, increase the bump map, the more dented that little uh, saucepan will be. Um, but keep it low. It should not be too obvious, just with like slight movements you should see some kind of um, um, breakup here. Okay, one last thing is uh, if we want to make this look really um, photo real, you can see close up um, every part or like at least this one, they have like these micro scratches on it. And what that is helping is just help selling the realism of this. So actually I went ahead to Mari and they have a nice scratch generator and I just created a little scratch mask, exported that in 8K and now we have it in Maya and we'll be applying this in bump and in specular roughness. All right, here's my scratch mat. So let's just see what it looks like by just hooking it up. And you can see now we have these fine scratches all over and we'll be using this to break up our roughness. So right now we just have a single map in, in the roughness slot here, um, which uh, let's just first hook up the basic shader again and then we can visualize it. So this is what our roughness map looks like right now. And um, we just have a basic color here or like a multiply. So what I can do instead, we can just, um, we can try to see what happens if I just plug it into um, the multiply section here. 
We can see now we get this um, by just dropping it into the color correct. We get we see that we have pretty dark and then we see these white scratches all over. So if I render this now, we should see already um, the effect I'm going for. By just hooking that up, we can see it's scratched uh, quite nicely here. But we do want to give it a bit more control by using an AI range in between here. So I'm just plugging this into the input and then I'm hooking that out uh, back into the multiply. That way, if I um, I have control over the black levels and the white levels, so I can essentially just lift the blacks up a bit. So we do have our base roughness all over. You can see now by just increasing that, we still get our base roughness. But we can also reduce the fully white ones. So by just going lower on our output here, you can see that we only have very thin scratches now. And this is something what I wanted to do. I, did, I didn't want to make it too obvious. Um, you do want to see them, but it should not be in your face scratched up all over. I think by just uh, looking at this, this is already working quite well. We can maybe go a bit higher, maybe 4 or 5 here, just to boost it up. Um, what you can do as well, you can plug that into a bump map as well to just lift the effect even further. So I'm just creating another AI bump node here um, and stacking this again using the output of my previous one, going into normal and back into normal camera. And if I then find my uh, map here, and I'll just use a range actually, and just plug that into my bump map. You can already see now by doing this, we get way more um, visible bumps here. But we can again control the bump height individually, so we can have a very low value, and this should help maybe sell the look. Um, if you find this is too strong, you can um, either reduce the, um, the, the bump height even more, or just create another range after this which um, helps you to control or set the values even lower so i'm just doing that now by just hooking up that um, range in between and make sure smooth step is on and now i can just reduce output max to maybe 0.1 and this will still reduce the overall bump i think this is a good um, middle value here to just to see some kind of scratches but not too many All right, so now you guys know how to set up anisotropic shaders. Um, it's not applicable to just metals. You can also do it on all sorts of different materials. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this and be sure to check out my ever-growing Discord community. The link is in the description below. And another plug, um, if you want to support me, um, I do upload all these scene files over on my Patreon. So be sure to check it out over there. And I do have other support options like mentoring or like a one-on-one -on -one sessions. Everything is up there. So be sure to check it out. And yeah, without further ado, I want to thank everyone for your continued support. It really uh, means a lot. And I will see you guys in the next video.